What's up, Dragon Brood? We got one of our favorite people back again with Dev, and we're going to be covering some underrated cards, some sleepers, if you will, in Bloomborough. Because, man, I think there's a lot in this set, Dev. <laughs> there's too many, man. This is a really overhyped set, so sometimes it can be hard to find those like stones to under to overturn and look under. But um, I think that this is one of those weird sets where, paradoxically, there's so much hype that a lot of cards have kind of gotten lost in the shuffle. So... You I've know, already go ahead. I think there's also the issue that like there's a lot of creature theme stuff and the stuff that doesn't immediately fit a creature theme. People are kind of ignoring when some of those are actually really good cards for other decks. Yep. All five of my cards are non creatures for this. Oh, one. that's funny. I didn't even yeah. check my do I have I, I didn't only have one creature. You... No, that's not true. I have two creatures of my five. Yeah, I didn't even notice until you said that. I looked over at my guys and I was like, I don't have any guys. <laughs> but but yeah, um, I have already done my um, sleepers list for this set. Go check that out, by the way, over on my channel. But I've decided that none of the cards that were on my sleepers list are going to be on this one. So I basically get to do like top <laughs> 15 sleepers. But before we jump in, I do have like a weird kind of way that I've chosen these. Sure. These will not necessarily be super sleepery cards that you've never heard of or talked about from the set that aren't any, getting any hype. Some of these are going to be cards that are relatively hyped already that I think are even better than they're getting oh, credit nice. for. Nice. Let me just I think say only one of mine fits stuff that nobody's talking about. I think mine are kind of the same way. So gotcha. this will be an interesting list for people. Also, if you haven't seen Dev's channel, just go search SBMTG on YouTube and I'll take you right to his channel. Five letters is all it takes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should go check them out. You might yeah, even we, see my face over there four or five times. So yeah, you know. a, a week. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. we, we, get to, we get together a lot. <laughs> but um, yeah, and said, honestly, for the regulars who don't know, over on Dev's channel, a lot of times he has honorable mentions on his stuff. So I do have an honorable mention yep. for this top ten <laughs> list we're working on. I, I did not come prepared, <laughs> but you did, so I want to hear it. Yeah, so my first one is Hunter's Talent. This is this is my honorable yeah. mention here. Absolutely. I think this card is just all around neat. It's a two mana class card, which happens to be an enchantment. But when it enters, target creature you control deals damage to target creature you don't control. This in itself is just an, basically a sorcery speed fight spell. Yeah. You know, hell, not even a fight spell. It's, a bite. it's just a bite spell, right? Because yeah, your creature deals damage. You don't have to put your creature at risk. So it's like... If you were going to play any of the sorcery speed bite spells for some reason anyway, you might as well play this because it's all upside, yep. right? Then you pay two mana to go to level two, and then whenever you attack, target creature gets plus one, plus zero, and trample, which Pretty is good. kind of what creature decks already want to do. And then you can pay four, and at the beginning of your end step, if you control a big creature, you know, power four or greater, you get to draw a card. So yeah, this is just value on value. Like... What also makes this neat is if you're worried about playing against sweepers or whatever, you just move this to level four. So then when you do stick a creature, even if it just sits for a turn, you get a card at the end step. Yeah. You know, you start gaining value back. So, yeah, lots to love about this card. I think a few people have kind of been interested in this. But, man, even if you want to play this in paper, it's an uncommon. You can pick them up for like 25, 30 cents on some websites. Like just good all around solid value out of this card. So, yeah, I'll probably be playing this for sure. It does. Um, it's actually three pretty distinct and good green cards all on one card. You know what I mean? Like I just did. Um, I just put together. I haven't done the video yet, but I put together a mono green cube for this summer. And when you're doing a mono green cube, you have to get the removal down. So yeah. I have become an expert on fight and bite effects in green and stuff like Song of the Dryads and Lignify and like all the green removal. I know about it, baby. And this is actually one of the better green removal spells like ever printed in some ways, because it's just a normal bite effect that also happens to put an enchantment into play. You probably want that in certain decks. Um, and it becomes like a pseudo Luminarch Aspirant or like a fight rigging yeah, or something kinda. like that. And then it becomes like a there's like four cards like the Colossal Majesty and Garrick something. There's a Garrick card that like if you have a large creature, you get to draw cards. And so this is also that card. And it's just like everything that green decks want uh, in, in paid for in installments. And I really like this card, too. I think it's a really good pick. Yeah, so there you go. If you want some budget options to help your deck out, that's one you can look at. Fantastic. But all right, you're the guest, so you get to go first today. So what is your number five for <sighs> underrated cards? My number five is a card you may have heard of. Um, or maybe you haven't. I know no one's talking about uh, <laughs> Ral Crackling Wit over here. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. 
Yeah, the four the planeswalker of the set. So four mana, two of its isn't colors for a four loyalty planeswalker whose name happens to be Ral, depicted as an otter. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a loyalty counter on Ral Crackling Wit. Um, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, <laughs> put a loyalty counter on Ral Crackling Wit. Just wanted to double down on that. But you can also plus one to make a one one blue and red otter with prowess. You can minus three to draw three, discard two, and you can minus tenzo everybody to draw three. And you get an emblem with uh, instant and sorcery spells you cast have Storm. Yes, Storm in standard. That's why this card's good. Not really. I've heard a lot of people, when people talk about this card, that's the thing they bring up. It's Storm, 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 Storm. I don't think that's a good part of the card. I think that this being a Planeswalker with decent starting loyalty that can go to five the turn it comes out and then potentially get a, it gets a loyalty every time you cast a non-creature, not an instant or sorcery. Every time you cast a non-creature spell. So that's not just, you know, able to gain loyalty and mess up your opponent's combat math because you played an instant. It's also like, I played an enchantment on my turn. I guess that's a loyalty counter on rail. I think that passive ability is busted. Like, yeah, it's really, a, it's a really, really walker good. with prowess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's I, I, How have I not thought that's exactly what they're doing, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, good, no. good catch. This is, <laughs> good catch. this is really cool. I think just making the otter that already works with all the other otters that have prowess, obviously, right? You're stacking onto that stuff. If you're loading your deck with things that are cantrips, you know, that draw in addition to doing whatever they're doing, that can be really powerful. And then what I like about it is it does just let you kind of keep moving ahead, right? It's like, okay, well, I'll draw three discard two. I got to find a spell. Yep. Right. Just yep. to keep the, yep. the whole chain moving and keep you, you know, making more otters and prowess triggers and whatever. So like, yeah, this is pretty sweet. And again, I think sometimes you got to have some type of protection for those uh, control matchups with all the sweepers or whatever. This just lets you start rebuilding an otter force. Yeah. While potentially maybe even letting you get to that minus 10. Yep. There's a Planeswalker in standard is like Jaya, the four mana Jaya. Yeah. She also plus ones for a 1-1 one, one prowess. Uh, but this is so much better than that because of the passive ability. And, you know, honestly, if you're using the minus three correctly, it's functionally a minus one or a minus zero. Sure. Um, and I just, I don't know. I think this card can stack up loyalty very fast. And I'm not even that worried about using the ultimate. I just think this will be a seven loyalty planeswalker like super quickly and efficiently. So. I don't know where it goes. I don't think it goes in blue red spells. I think it's more like a Jeskai control kind of thing. But I do think that just that passive ability makes it so much better than most people are judging it. Because, you know, most people are like, nah, it's fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, you know, and I think it's a little better than fun. That's cool. I think it's a neat card. I, so yeah. I don't have a problem with it. Well, now, with that in mind, yeah, what's your number five-ish? My number five <laughs> is a card you can get pretty affordably right now and i was kind of surprised when i saw how cheap you could pick these up because of the ability on it but it's dawn's truce it's a colorless and a white for an instant cheap. you can gift a card so basically whenever you cast it when it resolves your opponent can have a card uh but you and permanence you control gain hexproof until end of turn but if you gifted the card then all those permanents get indestructible yep that's huge like and i'm thinking about all the other abilities that either you know like the heroic interventions right it's a know, white heroic intervention so yeah it's, it's or good. teferi's protection that basically removes your board protects it for a turn you know all that type of stuff those things tend to be very pricey like how we've reprinted heroic intervention multiple times and the price just started to come down reasonably on it yeah yeah it's ten dollars forever for like any printing of that card yeah so the fact that you could pick these up for like four to five bucks on pretty much every website right now was a little True. surprising to me. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> like, agreed. I've got this written as one of my, I just, I've written out my top 50 preliminarily, and this is one of my best cards in the whole set. Yeah. And it's um, only two mana for that. Ability. Again, it's the closest thing you're going to get in white to heroic intervention. Right. And everybody loves that card. Every green deck practically in commander or whatever plays that card. I played yep. it when it was in standard and 60 card stuff. Same. So, oh. yeah, this is going to find, even if it's just like two copies in a lot of your creature decks, you offset a lot of things, especially, you know, if you're trying to protect one of your big legends that you put into play that you invested some mana into, you know, if you're worried about, you know, not getting yourself killed to no more witnesses or whatever, you know, like. Yeah. 
there's a lot yeah. of stuff this card works well against or so much even just running your stuff into combat against other creatures and you're like great my stuff ain't dead <laughs> yeah like, yeah have a card what, what is the card surge of salvation from a year yeah. or so ago yeah, yeah um and this kind of functions a lot like that and so yeah i just think that this this works uh, in so many different like situations um and it's obviously just white heroic intervention and even if you're only using it like you don't get the card you're using it to like counter removal or whatever like that's a good use too yeah know? still totally fine really i mean good many times world I've souls cast rage a, too i've cast a one or two mana tyvar stand a lot just to protect something so totally reasonable to do that with this card too no, I, I agree like if, if this one is i expected this to be like eight bucks you know so because on pre-order especially the prices are inflated if this is three on pre-order it's going to be even cheaper presumably upon release and like pick it up there Picking is another <laughs> very interesting thing here, though, that it also makes it where they can't target you. Right. Right. This counters so, fireballs and yep. world or, or even against right. model red when they're just like, all right, we're going to lightning strike you and do that. You're like, no, no, no. Sorry. No, we're not <laughs> going to do that at all, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so some really good. Or, you know, you're trying to block a particular like triggered ability that targets you or you're trying to block a discard spell or whatever the case may be, right? Like this can do a lot of work against several different things. So I, yep. I'm, I'm into it. Yeah. I like it too, dude. Like I said, one of the best cards in the set by my estimation. All right. But, so um, what do you got for number four? Number four is probably the silliest pick. Um, uh Oh, <laughs> honestly, it's, it, this is not one that I think people will get upset because like, whatever, I, I think this is one that I think a lot of people might not even know about from the set. This is called For the Common Good. Uh, this is 2x oh, yeah, yeah. and a green for a sorcery. Create X tokens that are copies of a token you control. Then tokens you control gain indestructible until your next turn. Not till end of turn. Tokens you control gain indestructible until your next turn. Gain one life for each token you control. So how many ways are there to use this? You know what I mean? What yeah. have we learned from, say, Doppelgang, for instance? Um, Doppelgang was a card that like actually does see more than just content creator play in standard card that sees a ton of play in commander for that matter. And I think that, um, the ability to do like something really tricksy, I imagine there's something super duper tricksy with this card that will be discovered very soon, or like more stuff will come out that works with it. And just being able to have the mana, if you have the mana, <laughs> same, same, like the doppelgang principle applies here. If you have the mana, you can probably get up to something game winning with this very easily. And even if you don't go in the game on the spot, I think that the, the line of text that gives the tokens indestructible until until your next turn is actually pretty important, too. And I think over overlooked a good bit. Yeah, I was when I first saw this card, I was thinking about this like Naya Girid deck I had. And I was just like, you know what, if, if I could even just play this for, say, five mana and copy a token twice or whatever. Yeah. And then like, OK, cool. Now all those, you know, say golems have protection till the next or indestructible till the next turn so it's like more cool, or less just yeah. run them in you know and maybe copy some stuff because you have a gear it or whatever and now you get to attack with all those tokens next turn right like yep. so that seems pretty good right it's yeah like, i didn't i didn't even think about it in gear it that's a great idea that is a really really good idea yeah so yeah. just like i was thinking there's also like some various i've seen like teamer builds with the solemn or not the, solemn, the, the simulacrum synthesizer right, right? yeah that so could be like, good because you're, you're already copying, copying like that seven sevens. yeah or if you actually you know have the uh the one that like the other three mana thing it's like esoteric something where you like sacrifice something you can pay to and you get a copy of it a duplicator yeah that thing. so yeah. then and that'll let you make like random token copies of any artifact exactly and then so you this, go off this with could this work well with that too yeah. Right. So there's definitely some quirky uses with this, right? I don't know what we're going to do with it, but I do feel like the type of card when my opponent casts it and beat me with it, I'll be like, yeah, that tracks. <laughs> yeah. That was good. And also, that was kind of cool, you know? Yeah. Whatever. So I don't think you're going to see it all the time, but I do think it's the kind of card that has, like, you know, obviously narrow applications, but game winning, game winning applications. So, oh, yeah. And like it's you said, five mana to copy two tokens is actually okay. That's really, that's not a bad rate, like at all. Yeah, it doesn't need um, to be a lot. If you're copying the right tokens in the right situation, like I think we think about Magic Christmas Land a lot when we see cards and be like, well, I got to get to seven mana. Or I got to get to whatever. Right. It's like, no, sometimes just one or two copies of the right thing is enough. That's fine. Especially right. when it has indestructible for effectively a full turn. Like so you don't have to worry about cycle. it dying. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, I think there's something. 
there's something with this card, whether it exists right now or it will exist later. Like it's, it's a pretty decent looking magic card to me. But, um, what is your number four? Yeah. Is that correct? Number okay. Four. <laughs> Sorry. And this is a card I can't say enough good things about like this. This might be becoming slowly my favorite card in the set. And it's very weird because I like a lot of other things, but scrap shooter colorless green, green for a four, four raccoon yeah. archer. It has reach, but it also has gift a card to be able to destroy an artifact or enchantment when it enters a battlefield. Yep. It's really good. <laughs> Literally. I read this. It's one of two <laughs> creatures I read in the set and I looked at it and went, what even is this card? Like it's yeah. a three mana four, four with reach which is already good against like mono red or whatever, being able to block slick shots and stuff. So fantastic. Yep. Good. And it's great on rate, a three mana four, four. So that's awesome. But then now as a creature deck, you don't have to dedicate as many cards to dealing with artifacts and enchantments because this just comes into play and possibly kills them for you. Yep. Love it. And I don't care if I have to like give them a card or whatever it is. You know what I mean? I, yeah. If I got a three mana four four with a keyword ability and blew your thing up, like you can have a card. You know what I mean? Like it's going to be hard to answer that play. It's really swingy, which is why you're giving your opponent a card because a four four with a keyword ability and blow your thing up is ridiculously like pendulum y. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, like I, I kill your synthesizer <laughs> so that slows your deck down. Or maybe my first couple of creatures I played before this, you got rid of with uh, the white enchantment. They remove stuff like two or less or whatever, right? Cool. Now I get my stuff back. <laughs> right. And like, yeah, you give your opponent a card, but like if you if you take out their insidious roots or their um, Oh yeah. You know, like just whatever they built their deck around, the synthesizer, like you were saying, if you take out their key artifact or enchantment, like yeah, they might draw another one, but like chances are higher they draw a land. You I know, and like, I so <laughs> if there's a real drawback to the card, it's gonna be how aggressive do you choose to be with it? Right? Yeah. Because Knowing the way you've built your deck, if you include this, you maybe only have one or two other things that are going to be able to get rid of artifacts and enchantments. Yeah. So you have to decide, am I holding this till that point, or am I just going to say a 4-4 four, four is good enough here? Yeah, do I just want a 4-4 four, four on curve, right? Yeah, so that's yeah, a love, real thing to consider. I love that kind of tension, though, on a magic card, right? I, I actually really like that in terms of design and how fun they are to play with, you know? So. I don't know. Yeah, I, I love this card. And I think some people are skipping over it because like, yeah, it's a Reclamation Sage of whatever, you know, but like it's the Reclamation Sage is a Reclamation Sage we've had yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Lauren is a good magic card, too. And that's just a two one. So like, what do you imagine this will be? Right. Like it, reach, has, it even gets reach for no extra reason. It's no just reason. on there. <laughs> and reach is really good. You know, it's Spyglass Siren, Deep Cavern Bat, you know, all these like two and three mana oh, pliers. In general, in the so, set, don't undersell it because there are birds birds there's bats you know whatever uh, that people are going to be playing that you want to be able to block those flyers and you know we already had flyers besides deep cavern bat or whatever there was everyone's been playing i feel like i see it a lot more often that the angel the artifact angel it's a three man oh, yeah, yeah. three three that guy and like this dude blocks that all day you know well this just kills it's, that if you want to kills it just kills it <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's an artifact <laughs> get it off the table so yeah really really though i i do think this is one of the better green cards in the entire set yeah, this card's um, great. And you can pick him up for like four or five bucks right now, which is awesome. That's a good deal. So, that's yeah. a, he's very playable in Commander. Gift is so broken oh, in definitely. Commander. Yeah, it's like you can blow something up on the other side of the table and promise somebody entirely different the card. So that's that's dumb. It's a good card. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, all right, dude. What's your number three? My number trace is Portent of Calamity. Uh, this Ooh, is yeah, yeah. X in a blue for a sorcery. I had a commenter actually brought me around on this, so it can be done. Okay. Um, this is X in a blue for a sorcery. Reveal the top X cards of your library. For each card type revealed, you may exile a card of that type from among them. Put the rest into your graveyard. Interestingly, you may cast a spell from among the exiled cards without paying its mana cost if you exile four or more cards this way. Then put the uh, other exile cards into your hand. So this is, it feels like a delirium card. You exile a delirium worth of card types with this card and you get one of them for free. Um, but you can also kind of use it like a divination, you know, like if, if I pump three mana into this, I'll probably get a land and another card, which is yeah. three, three mana for two cards. You know, that's a divination. It's exactly what it is. Um, however, somebody in my comments, again, I had already thought the card was okay. 
But their argument was, what is an Atraxa deck doing right now? Atraxa has to play a lot of different card types because that's what Atraxa does. She comes into play and she puts one of each card type into your hand. So you need to play a lot of different card types for Atraxa. You're also trying to ramp for Atraxa decks, which this card also wants. So can this card functionally be copies five and six of Atraxa in your deck? Pay seven mana. It finds an Atraxa. You play the Atraxa for free. It puts the other cards in your hand. It puts some in your graveyard, which is worth noting too. Yeah. So, you know, whether you're talking about the scalability of the card, the ability to fit into an already existing deck and not like be a bad slot, right? Um, or just the ability to like ramp into this and get any number of things, whether it's Atraxa, Behold the Multiverse, um, any of those, you know, a, a tally, um, Yeah. whatever, whatever giant thing you're trying to get you can get for effectively free and still put more cards into your hand. If this does get an Atraxa, what are you putting seven cards in your hand? So like, cause this puts the cards in your hand that you didn't cast for free. So you get well, those you get two. Up to, well, the different creature type or different card types. Card you, type. could, you could get up to realistically in most decks, probably five different cards. Right. About as many as you can with Atraxa, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. So, you know, if this puts the remaining cards that weren't named Atraxa in your hand and then Atraxa comes down and resolves and you get those cards, too. So what? Do, how many cards did you actually put in your hand just then? <laughs> like, yeah, that seems cool. You know, and it might be win more. You could argue it's win more. I don't know. You know? I, think, I think to your point in an Atraxa build, this is probably a reasonable card. You know, I, I don't think it's necessarily style points or anything. It has a function. I mean, yeah. it allows you potentially a cheap Atraxa and load your hand. So I don't I don't think there's a problem with that. I think in non Atraxa decks like that, then maybe there's an argument because we do still have several cards that are some version of like pay four or five mana, look at the X like four to eight cards of your library, pick a couple things, stuff happens, you know. And those are really good. Yeah. So those will probably be people's first preference because they're also instant speed. Yeah. But yeah. The upside to this is real high, though. Extreme. Real high. You know, and it never technically whiffs. Like, you're going to feel kind of bad if all it does is draw three or something like that. But it doesn't actually ever really whiff, even if it doesn't get you a card. But, yeah, like, I, I mean, you say feel bad that you only drew three, but you maybe only feel bad because you did it at sorcery speed. Right. But you mean you still got three or four cards yeah. in hand. If, you know what I you, mean? Like, if you survive that turn, then like you probably got the sunfall or you probably yeah. drew into the attracts or whatever it is, you know. So I don't know. I think there's actually something to this card. I don't think you play more than one or two, but I, I think you play some number and you know, very specific decks. Yeah, I think this will show up in some places. It's just um, the versatility is high enough, especially late game. If you just want to dig, you're just like, you know what? I'm just gonna pay seven. Make sure I can get the cards I want in hand. Maybe if it's just you're looking for one or two, maybe you're Planeswalker, maybe you're Sweeper, whatever, and you just guarantee you have it for the next turn, you know? Easy as pie. And hey, there's even might be turns later in the game where like, okay, I drew this for my turn, but I need to draw. I absolutely have to draw the removal spell. So you kind of just cycle it. You yeah. know, if you, if you yeah, make one way. for X, you just draw the top card of your library, effectively. So like, that's fine too, I guess. Like it kind of has cycling. <laughs> At sorcery speed, but still. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I don't know, man. It's not, it's not that bad. It's a good card. <laughs> no, that card definitely has uses. Now, well, where are we on your we're list? We're going to be here? my number three here. And guarantee you, nobody has this on their list. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I like to hear. <laughs> but this surprised me the opposite of how much it actually was. It was more expensive than I thought. Oh. But this is short bow. It's a two colorless equipment. The equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, vigilance and reach. And it's equip of one. This is actually going for $2 already. Which yeah, is just equipment decks. Equipment decks and commander specifically might think that's okay. You know, the thing that's the biggest selling point on this is you can play this in the mouse decks because you can target things for one mana. So you can literally just equip, move it, equip, move it, equip, move it. And now you've triggered all those Valiant things. For the three baby's mana. first Nadu deck. Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> yep. I've been messing around with some stuff and this has surprised me. Like now the other option is you could play the Jete, but one that's also like a mythic or whatever. Yeah. And 
it costs, it's a legendary. So you can't play more than one, right? If you wanted to have more than one out at a time. But this is actually pretty sweet. Like, and giving something vigilance and reach and a plus one, also really cool yeah. on top of everything else. So you get to attack and just block with the last thing you put it on for the turn if you want. And block anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this thing's just cool. And it feels like it could fit a few different builds because one of the problems I think we've had in standard is the reason equipment decks haven't really worked is we just haven't had efficient equipment. Yeah. Like I said, you've had like Jate, but even that has to like hit the opponent to get to start doing things or whatever. The other equipment costs like three, equip for two, or it's like it enters equip to a thing, but then after that, the equip cost is like three yeah, or four. Yeah, huge. Yeah, this yeah. is just a good, simple, low-cost, efficient equipment that actually has really good abilities on it. A plus one, yeah. vigilance, and reach. So like, yeah, why not play this thing? Like three real abilities, you know? Um, two keywords and a plus one plus one, but a plus one plus one is good. I hadn't, I don't even think I've noticed that card. I think you actually got me with something that I just do not remember at all. It was literally seen. the last card previewed, as far as I could tell. Oh, okay. It was literally yeah. the last card because I was looking and it was like a card's missing. And then I refreshed the next day and went, Oh, it must be this. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's. It's not bad. It's certainly not bad. You know, it's really, and really like cheap I said, to equip. If you're looking for budget options to fill in on the mouse decks, particularly, yeah. this can just trigger value or anything that wants to be targeted for that matter. Right. Like, exactly. This lets you hit that. And there's a bunch of cards throughout history that want to be targeted to do something. But yeah, this yeah. is this fits perfectly and it's super low cost and doesn't tax your mana. Good call, man. Like that's that's a sleeper. That's that's the definition <laughs> right there. So I don't think you're you actually called it. I think you said like nobody would expect this card, and like yeah, I, I certainly. I will tell you, you in early me. sample draws and ideas, <laughs> you know, theory crafting, I think it's going to turn out pretty good in those builds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Godspeed. <laughs> All right, so now we're down to the top two on each of our lists. Yep. So what uh, do you got? My number two is a card that, like, everybody knows I can't help but love. If you know anything about me, um, if it's your first time seeing me, hello. I like Orzov. I like Orzov. Um, and this this is Lunar Convocation here, uh, an enchantment. Yeah. Costs two to cast, Orzov colors to cast. And at the beginning of each of your end step, rather, uh, if you gained life this turn, each opponent loses one life. Uh, but also at the beginning of your end step, dual trigger here. If you gained and lost life this turn, you create a 1 1 black bat creature with flying. And you can also pay uh, two mana here to pay two life and draw a card. So facilitates itself. You can pay the life to it and hopefully gain some life and whatever you have a bat. I think in standard, this is just bitter blo batter blossom, I guess, if you want to call it that. <laughs> um, it is fairly easy with uh, mostly with pain lands. Painlands, and I guess if you want to go this far, um, Thran Portal, you know, there are sure. plenty of lands in standard that can tap to deal a damage to us. Well, look at that. We just lost life on our turn. There are plenty of bats and obviously cards in the Amalia deck, the life gain decks that more or less guarantee you a life gain every turn or every turn. So I think it's fairly easy to just turn this into better blossom, you know, um, because it's a bitter blossom that draws you cards and gain and, and and incrementally damages them aside from just the combat damage you're getting off the bats. So um yeah, I actually think this is in some ways phenomenal. And like people are kind of shortchanging it. Even I did that at first, but the more I look at it, the more I think this is so enableable in standard that it it more or less just is bitter blossom. I mean, the fact that the card can trigger itself. You know, you just yeah. pay two mana, lose two life, draw a card, right? Like that's good enough. I also think this could fit in some non-creature, not well, more mid-rangey decks, right? May not have to be in the aggro yeah. bats. However, though, I've been surprised at the number of people's lists I've seen with bats that aren't playing this card. I figure you need at least two copies in there. Yeah, at least two. You know, I would uh, exactly, exactly. That, it just does a lot of different things. You know, just draining your opponent every turn. You being able to make an extra creature, being able to draw a card. I, you know what else you can play? You could play Fountain Port with this because you can yeah. pay some life if you need to lose life, right? Yep, yep. It, it checks that box for you. Hell, it lets you sack these bats to draw a card if you want to. You can sack a token, draw a card. Right? Draw a card, yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff in the set that works with this outright. And of course, the general bat theme already is gain life, lose life. So like, yeah, like if you're just getting in with Deep Cavern Bat, which isn't even a Bloomberg card, but like you're just getting in with Deep Cavern Bat, you have successfully gained life every turn. And so like all you have to really do is like, okay, so that means that I have I have functionally, if I get through with a Deep Cavern Bat, 
I functionally have a card in my hand that is a two mana one one flyer, draw a card. Right? If I've gained life in the turn, then I, I kind of have a two mana one one flyer that draws a card when it enters the battlefield because of this thing's activated ability. That sort of reminds me of like a Dawn of Hope. Like if you if you if you wanted to make Bitter Blossom better, combine it with Dawn of Hope. That's kind of what they've done. I huge fan of this card. Um and I, I wanted to be like, oh, I just like Orzov. I just like bats. I just like gaining life. I just like incremental damage to my opponent like that first ability does. I'm just biased towards this card because I like things. It can't actually be that good. You're skipping your turn two in standard. Never do that. But the more I look at it, the more I think like, actually, this is generating a lot of value. But maybe <laughs> like this a ton of thing, value. That's the thing. Maybe you're not playing this on turn two. You know, maybe, maybe you're, you're playing four. it on turn four or turn right. five. The other exactly. thing, too. You don't have to draw the card on your turn. Now, you won't get the necessarily trigger, but you have other ways that you could potentially lose the life. So yeah. you can wait, let the opponent take their turn, see if maybe you want to lose, use your removal or activate something else or whatever. And if not, you're like, cool, I'll lose two life, draw a card. Start yeah, my and turn with an extra card, right? Kind of okay, you know? It's not like Phyrexian Arena or anything, but like... Sure. It's still instant speed, draw a card, EOT, or like if your opponent attacks in and you need to draw the removal spell, this gives you a chance to do it, so... Yeah, I I really do think it's a solid enchantment with a relatively low like starting cost. Could be worse than two mana, you know. Yeah, I think so too. I think the card's just solid. Like yeah. I like I said, I've been surprised the number of lists I've seen that weren't playing it because I think two is the right number for those lists. Honestly, more often than not. So, yeah, I think people should should be playing the card. Just a I'll lot of value. I'll say last thing though that it's phenomenal in multiples. You know, if that's you're triggering true. one, that's then you're triggering true. two or three, and that's a lot of bats, <laughs> you know, that's a lot of life loss for your opponent. If you're, yep. if you're getting to the point where you're shocking them every turn, that's pretty good. So, but All we right. are at, uh, what, your number two My here? My number two. And this is weird because I think it's just on the cusp of not being underrated anymore. Okay. I think when it first came out, there was a lot of people down talking it. And I feel like over the last couple of days, I've seen people kind of come around on this card. So the card I'm talking about is Hugs, Grizzly Guardian. This is so freaking good, dude. This card is so good. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I, I think yep. at first people were sleeping on this card. But anyway, it's a four mana, technically, five, five with right. Trample. And happens to be the only Badger in the set, I think, too. Interesting. I think enough. it is. But you get to play an extra card each turn or extra land each turn, which is awesome. But you can also pay X, and then when it enters the battlefield, you get that many cards exiled that you get access to until the end of the next end step. <laughs> Drawing cards the red way. Yeah, which is... Is it the next huge. end step? No, it's or... in the next turn. So technically, okay. when the turn ends, right? Okay. The thing about this card, though, is even if you never pay X, it's a four mana five five that lets you play extra lands. Like Doesn't just, it like just trample up. too? Yeah, just straight yeah. up four mana, five, five trample, play extra lands. That's so nuts. Like, and there's some decks that will just want that to be able to play extra lands. You know, like that in and of itself is fine, but it's one of the best late game top decks you can get because it's like, all right, I guess I'll pay eight, you know, whatever. Yep. Now I get access to three cards. You have to deal with this five, five at that stage of the game already. That tramples probably over whatever planeswalker tokens or whatever you would make, right? But you also see the other three cards plus whatever I draw that you're going to have to deal with, right? That deal are on with, deck, right? Right. Like you can take out the hugs. I've still got two cards at least that you have to deal with. You know. Yeah, just so much stuff going on with this card that's just really cool. And like I said, initially people were kind of again the discussions I saw. People were like, "Well, you know, if you don't have like seven mana to spend or whatever," I'm like, "I might just be playing this as a five-five, right? Depending that's on the situation." Fine. Do you guys not understand? Like, I know Juzom Jin is not as impressive as it used to be, a four mana five five, but that's still to this day, four mana five five is still good stats. If this it does is anything four apart mana from five that, it's five good. With two abilities, even if you never pay the X. Yep. <laughs> if you do, by the way, if you do pay the X, I really like how the abilities kind of work with one another. Oh, yeah. Because if you exile like two cards off the top of your library, one of them's a land, you can go ahead and play that land. Yep. <laughs> really sick. This actually was number one on my sleepers list for my top 10 sleepers, but I ended up taking it off for kind of the same reasons that you've outlined. I felt like it started to get a little bit too much hype. People started talking about it. I think the reason people didn't talk about it is because it was previewed much earlier than all the other cards. 
Yeah, um, for sure. Just more or less by itself too. It wasn't part of the original early access preview stream or early preview. Yeah. And it wasn't part of preview season proper. It was kind of in the middle there. So I think it got lost in the shuffle and not as many people saw it. And I still think a lot of people are unaware of yeah, this I card. Think- the conversations now have come around to, well, you know, maybe you just want something where you're trying to ramp and just searching another land is fine and putting it into play. Or, you know what, if I got this late game, or in my case, I have a raccoon deck that I've already done the video for if you want to check it out, but I have a raccoon deck where I have all the extra mana. What am I doing with it? It's like, well, I'm playing hugs and getting access to like three or four more cards. Yeah. <laughs> like, why not? So like, yeah, I'm digging hey, this card a lot. Yeah, I think this could be an incredible top end for any mid-range deck that plays these colors. Maybe we'll see Jund or Teamer again. It's been a while. Um, this card reminds me of Hydroid Crisis, like a fixed a Hydroid Crisis, because yeah. it draws a bunch of cards when it comes into play. You know, rather than get large itself, it still has an evasive ability. Crisis had flying. This has trample. Um, but it's so much better sort of at the baseline than Crisis ever was. Well, yeah. You just, again, you don't have to pump it. Like you said, you don't have to pay X. You can just, it's a four mana five, five trample that lets you just throw lands into play. And that's crazy too. Yep. So it's definitely it's a business just, card all its own, all its own. Right. You don't have to do nothing with it, you know, besides be a big smashy guy, but it's so much more than that. You know, late in the game, it's an incredible mana sink draws you a bunch if that's what you want it to do. And um, yeah, the the ramp is significant too. So yeah, I think this is actually, I've already said this about a card or two, but I do think this is one of the best cards in the set. Um, Hands right. down. This leads us to our number ones. Yep. And I know they're going to be different. So I'm curious what yours is. My number one card, man, how is hugs not number one? Um, my number one card, I had to choose between one of the two seasons. Cause I, I like two Uh-oh. seasons. We might've chosen lot. the same card. Oh boy. <laughs> Mine now, is also a season. <laughs> the one that I cut, um, the one that I cut and didn't talk about is season of white season of the burrow. Uh Oh, um, okay. I, so, so that's not, I really like that card a lot. Um, I want to compare it to like casualties of war. Cause it can take out two permanents and give you a permanent. It seems really good. Yeah. But the one I ended up on was, I bet it's the one you chose is season of loss. The black no, I actually season. have a different one, but that okay. is, that is a good one though. Cool. Um, I think that this card is a banana pudding, dude. Like I think this card is nasty and like no one's really talking about it. This uh, is one of those. It gives you five pause cards. This is five mana, three and two black for a sorcery. Choose up to five pause. Just call it energy. Choose up to five energy worth of mana. Yeah. You may choose the same mode more than once. For one paw, each player sacrifices a creature. But of course, you can spend all five paws on that if you want to. Um, two paws. Draw a card for each creature you controlled that died this turn. And for three paws, each opponent loses X life. Each opponent loses X life, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. I am personally in love with this card and have a ridiculous amount of bias towards it. Um, For one, it can be a lopsided sweeper where my opponent has four guys. I got two guys or I have more guys. And let's say that I have more guys than my my, my opponent. So if I make them sacrifice three guys, I'm there. That's all their guys, but I'm still up two guys, you know, so it's like it is a symmetrical sweeper, but it can be a little more one sided than other sweepers, which I like. You can also just not have any creatures in play and it's functionally a whole sweeper. You could also they have two guys in play. Cool. There goes two of your dudes. I'll kill those guys and I'll also spend three paws. You take a couple of damage, whatever. The thing I like about this the most outside of just being a sweeper, which is a hell of a thing to do on the that's great that the card does that. But also, in Commander, you just kill the whole table with this card. In yeah. 1v1 standard, you can kill them with this card. You have no idea. You might, because you've been there. But like, how many times have we built these like stick fingers, cruel somnophage, souls of the lost, these decks that want to have a bunch of creatures in their yard, and they can't finish because they can't Man, trample stick through fingers, that or card whatever. Was like the most trap card ever to build a deck with. I know. And like, we, that thing was trash. Like <laughs> I loved it, and I still love it, and I hate that it's rotating, but you're right. My best stick fingers builds cut stick fingers. Dude, every time. Um, Same so, thing for me. But Every I still time. love, I still love these self mill decks that put a bunch of creatures in their yard and all that. And this is finally like, I don't have to get through for combat damage. I don't have to have 40 guys on the table with insidious roots. I can just blow you away if I resolve this card. And that is also good, but it's not just that it's also kill all your guys. This card is so good. The thing is like, <laughs> like 
the self mill idea with like Termogoyf, Somnophage, Souls of the Lost. Is that the card that like, uh, yeah, it's Souls so, of the Lost. Yeah. So it's like that type the other of other two stuff. drop that does that. Yeah. And then having this to just, all right, here's another six damage, right? Like that would be fine. I think stuff like Roots could be okay. Yeah. Cause like Roots doesn't care. Like, what am I going to do? Creatures die and then I get to use them out of my graveyard. Like, yeah, whatever. Right. And I may potentially just also deal an extra six to you while we're at it. You know, right? like, like I'm trying to 20 people with this, with like yeah. cemetery tampering and stuff like that. But like you could pretty easily hit for like seven and just finish. You just yeah. finish that one. So I mean, there's, there's a lot of little things you could do with this. I could be pretty reasonable in a few different decks, right? This could be both function and be an actual finisher. Whereas like, I don't know if those decks necessarily want to play just traditional sweepers. Because there's not yeah. necessarily that much value in it for them. But if you can do this, where there's value plus getting rid of all those other things, they might be interested in this card. I think that this is specifically really good. And we've already talked about like roots and, you know, the green black decks that want to fill their yards and all that. But this is specifically good looking to me in um, like sacrifice decks, LSO core. Bartolome, Vron. Yeah, stuff any, like that. any of the aristocrats type decks. Yep. It yeah. specifically lets you sacrifice creatures and like some cards trigger because you sacrificed a guy. Yep. Um, and also in the aristocrats decks, this has an interesting mode where you might just choose the second mode twice after you've sacrificed two or three guys. And now I draw yeah. six, you know, also like true. Um, those decks also have a problem closing, you know, like Elisil core and Vron and all this incremental dinky damage will get them down to like eight. But then you can't finish with combat damage because, you know, they've got big guys or whatever. They have a sweeper. Um, but this allows you to, you know, OK, all my incremental damage and my couple of attack steps got you down to seven, eight, nine. And this card just finishes. And I, I, that could be good, too. So I, I feel like this goes in like multiple decks that need the help personally. Um, and even if it doesn't do any of that sweeper that takes out indestructible and hexproof guys like what do you want? This is a good card. Yeah, <laughs> so. even even I think to your point as a commander card. It could be a finisher. It could get rid of problematic cards on the field. You know, it, it does a lot of things in a variety of different decks. And it does. These are pre-ordering fairly cheap. I don't think I've seen them higher than like six bucks anywhere. So like, yeah, totally, which is crazy because they're all like mythics, you know, yeah, but you I don't totally think any right of now. I don't think any of the seasons are very expensive, but I might put this in. I have an LSO core and a Dina and a Judith. I have three commander. There you deck, go. All of those could probably play that card. <laughs> every single one wants this card, dude. So I have to order three. Um, but yeah, you also have a season as number one. I I'm dying do. to know what it is. I am Go going ahead. with season of gathering. The green so, one. Is that right? Four colorless green, green. And again, you get five paws worth of value to spend. So for one, you can put a plus one, plus one counter on a creature you control. It gains vigilance and trample. You can pay two, choose artifact or enchantment and destroy all permanents of the chosen type. All which is of them. Random, but Okay. And just busted. <laughs> and then you can pay three and draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control, which generally is going to be four, five, or six if you're playing right. green, depending if after you're doing you put your right, plus and plus you know. one cards or whatever, or counters. This thing, I started thinking about this, right? Like, what is the upper end of what green decks try to do right now? It tends to be Nissa. Right. right? But if we're playing Nissa Ascendant Animus, mostly for the overrun effect. What if we paid a mana less and just did overrun plus? Right. I, I tend to play Nissa mostly for the plus one. And then like later you get to but the, we already overrun, have so many uh, good value things now because yeah. we have three mana, four, fours and two mana, three, threes and whatever. That's true. We don't really That's need true. that anymore. So I'm looking at season of gathering and thinking, man, what if I just had like, three five fives attacking with vigilance and trample like that's probably good enough to finish a game should <laughs> right <laughs> again you can also just like oh let me get rid of all the enchantments and i'll just draw four cards that's a but to me the, yeah. <laughs> the busted thing about this is like even if it takes four paws like that you know that's most of the paws and that's it costs you six but still like blowing up both artifacts and enchantments seems great but even just one of them even just yeah. one you know, like like you said, if if, if it's six mana at sorcery speed's crazy, but like if you take out all of your opponent's enchantments and get like you know four cards or three cards off their side of the table, and you draw even like three off of this, I 
I think you spent your mana pretty well. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. And, and again, honestly, I think this goes into anything that's generating mana as well. Right. In creature based stuff. So again, when I'm talking about mana. like raccoons, it's like, what am I going to spend this extra mana on? Right. So I get the credit for the expend because this is more than four. And I get to draw some significant number of cards that I may still be able to cast. Yeah. <laughs> right. Especially depending on what kind of mana you're making, you know, like yeah. a soul cauldron deck. I don't know if a soul cauldron deck wants this, but it actually does some kind of interesting things. You know, it puts counters on creatures, which the soul cauldron deck wants, because now those creatures will have soul cauldrons activated abilities, blah, blah, blah. Um, but also, if you have a lot of creatures in play and a lot of mana, this could uh, just be overrun and kill your opponent. Yep. And that's fine. It interacts with any like stuff they're doing over there on their side of the table. And in Soul Cauldron, you might have like a 6-6 six, six that's gotten a bunch of counters. And you just draw all the cards and it helps you win the game that way. Now, I will also say this. So, There's several decks that care about plus one plus one counters already. Yep. And one of the things they have sometimes is like you can't punch through. Because you either only yeah. have one or two things in the deck with Trample. And your creatures are like these 6-6s six, you can't get over. It's like, well, here you go. Give them an extra plus one yeah. plus one and trample pass, right? And I'm, even in I'm, commanders, because there's two or three commanders that care about plus one plus one counters. Mm -hmm. I think that um, in most commander, like plus one plus one counters matter decks, this probably tries to take a slot. In standard, I will say with stuff like the Ozolith, you know, this will put double counters on your yeah, guys. That's kind of sexy, too. you know. Um, but ultimately, I do think it's a lot of mana, but I think that people underestimate overrun specifically. In mm -hmm. standard, I'm not saying it's Crater Hoof Behemoth or anything, no, but no. like it's still Trample, like you were saying, babe. I'm just piggyback on you for a second. Trample is an underrated ability, especially when it comes to busting through with your mono green deck. And I think that if any deck is going to have the ability to play a six mana card, it's probably a green deck. So, yeah, I, I will say this is getting some undue scrutiny from the community. I've heard people call this the worst one. I don't think so. I think I the think red so one's the worst one by far. I think the word. I also think the red one's the worst one, but also the red one ended up on my sleepers list. I think that um, just ramping five for five mana is something some decks might actually want to do. Just like make five treasure sure. tokens, you know. But I do think the red one is probably on its face the silliest one. Um, the green one, I think this has a surprising amount of applications, especially in commander where like. Your how much actual card value are you getting off of this card if you choose the second mode twice? Oh, exactly. I was I like, had that exact <laughs> thought of like, even if I don't do anything else, I'm like, you know, for six mana, I just destroy all artifacts and all enchantments. Yeah, I'm in. Count yeah. me in. What's that, like 12 different permanents on the board when I do that? So yeah, it's probably worth playing this card. Yeah, so I can see yeah. a lot of decks that are playing green just wanting this one of just as a fail safe. Shatterstorm and Tranquility thrown together yep. on the same card. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Seems good. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm with you on that <laughs> all day. That's a fun number one. It I is. I like that. Yeah, because it's it actually is a sleeper. I just went with a card that everybody already knows is good, but they're not talking about enough. You want the card no one's really talking about, and when they do talk about it, it's usually to be derogatory towards it, which is not. <laughs> so that's you, an actual I, sleeper right there. I think the real sleeper here really is Shortbow. I think if you're not playing that yeah. in your mouse deck, try it out. Like it's going to be totally worthwhile. It, like, I, I review every card in the set. I do previews for every card in the set. I sit down and do a four hour video where I jump through every card in the set and rate them. And I do not remember having seen that card. So that is you, if you can get me like that is a sleeper right there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, good, I'm good looking pick. forward to it. <laughs> But all right, dude, those are our top five. Let us know in the comments. Obviously, I'm sure y'all have stuff like, why didn't you mention this card? I'm sure there's <laughs> something you wanted us to talk about. So let us know. And where can they find you, Dev, whenever they're done doing all that? Well, all you got to do is go over to the YouTube search bar and hit S-B-M-T-G. Five letters, three letters, five letters. We'll take you right to our front door, baby. And we got a lot of content for preview season, not just previews of the cards, but we just put out our top 10 sleepers list. Top 50 cards in the set is coming out in the next couple of days. So after that deck text, we got a lot rolling out for Bloomboro and I honestly have to say I haven't been this excited for a standard set, not just because of rotation, but because of like bloomboro looks strong enough to affect standard so there's the gonna be a lot cool, of content. man <laughs> yeah dude cards are awesome i've seen some people relatively few i have to say but i've seen some people basically say like this sets for kids and i hate it and it's like come on man lighten up have some fun this set looks powerful 
And I think that I wanted cute animals and I wanted fun little goofy cards, but I also wanted powerful cards and Bloomborough gave them to us. It did. You know, sometimes I just wonder if some people just don't like fun. Maybe they don't have friends. Right. Like, right. I don't know. But like, yep. yeah, have fun with this set, man. It's going to be totally worth it. It is. Some of these cards look raw. I'm telling yeah. you. <laughs> some of these cards look so raw, dude. So, but all right. Yeah, I guess go over to, I should also say, go over to my channel. If you want a slightly surlier video, we just did the <laughs> we just did the top five overrated cards, really top ten overrated cards uh, in Bloomboro. So if you do want to see somebody be like, "Oh, this sets bad," oh, we, don't we, do that. we definitely we actually talked don't do about that some cards, and people are going to be mad about over there. Yeah, but we we did talk <laughs> some smack. So that's another thing. Just hit SBMTG on the YouTube search bar. Come over and you can watch more of us shooting shooting the the breeze. Probably the best way to say that. Yep. About some magic cards. And if you want to be on top of all the Bloomboro decks, as always, we'll have our daily stuff out. So if you're looking for new decks with new cards, I got you covered. But you're going to have to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and hit the notification bell because that still matters. But that's going to do it for now. That's all I have for you. We'll see you next time.